We've always been committed to generational relevance here at FaithBridge, connecting the soul-saving, life-changing gospel truth of Jesus with every generation. We've been committed to that from the very start, going way back to the, to the beginning when there was just several dozen of us that were meeting in that home. Even then, we only had four or five kids, but I knew if we're going to be a church that makes an impact in this community, in the suburbs, we're gonna have to connect with every age of children and youth. And it was right about then I met a guy named Ben Stewart, who was a college kid getting ready to graduate from Texas A&M. The interview process was funny because I don't think Ken really knew what to say and me neither. So we were looking at each other and he's like, you wanna work here? I'm like, I guess. Like, but I don't know that anyone would say, hey, if you're planning a church, your first hire should be a youth pastor. I, that's not in any book. That doesn't make sense. Did every way I step into it go great? No. So within about the first four months, I had gotten our five students and six leaders. I grew it to like one kid and no leaders. So just bang and start. I didn't know how to be a youth pastor, but I knew the Bible and I knew how to care about people. And it dawned on me when John was trying to summarize Jesus, he kept saying he was full of grace and truth. And I thought, that's what we got. I can legitimately love you and I can present you the truth. And so I remember we finally got these Bible studies started. And what I would do is just print off on a piece of paper, a little chunk of one of the gospels. And I remember sitting there and there was this one kid, a guy had brought a friend and the friend said, I can't believe we're doing this. We're like, what? And he was like, we're just reading the Bible and explaining it. And he goes, man, I've never seen anything like this. I'm telling everybody. I was like, okay. And we started to grow, man. We outgrew this little apartment we were in and had to move to kind of the central kind of hub of this apartment complex. And on it began to grow because we didn't have all the bells and whistles, man, but we had sincere love and we had truth. And you got those two things and that's, that's the foundation that church grows on. And he grew that fledgling student ministry from five up to a dozen and two dozen. And one day the guy handed me a piece of paper um, that I would get at the end of every Sunday. And it said 76 youth were down in that choir room. The legacy that was started back then continues today with our commitment being to connecting these kids that are coming up with the gospel of Jesus in a way that transforms their lives. It is one of the most rewarding things to see transformation in a student, whether that is over a long period of time and there are slow drips of things that you can see that change month by month or year to year, or if it is a more of a life altering turnaround where they experience Jesus in a new and fresh way, either one is just so rewarding and life-giving because they get excited about it. So you can't help but be excited for them and be a part of that. It's so, so, so great. I know when I was a youth pastor, I had several parents come to me just in tears, thanking me for loving their kid. And I didn't understand it at the time as a single guy. I was like, yeah, sure, man. But now I understand it as a parent. I'm like, if someone came alongside to help me love my kid and know the truth of God, I'd be forever grateful. And so that's part of it is I'm, I'm helping this family answer some of their kids' specific questions and challenges. Another thing though is sometimes you've got some kids that aren't interested in church, but if you can create an avenue that's speaking directly to their heart needs, speaking directly to their issues, they'll go, I wanna, I need to go there. They're answering my questions. My friends are there and they're helping me. And sometimes that can anchor families that are maybe iffy on if they show up to church. And then on the other side, you've got some kids that their family's not going to church. And people talk about that in the culture today. People are growing less religious, churches are shrinking. But we found that if you create a robust youth ministry, now all of a sudden you've got some kids that love Jesus that can invite that lost friend. And it's a way to have a mission onto the campus. And if you wanna change the lives of people, get to them when they're asking those big questions, when they're young people. We want them to exit our doors as seniors in high school, people that are being launched into the world. We want them to be people who have a foundational understanding of faith, but also an independence in their faith to where when they go to college, they're not easily um, shaken. 
they walk into that sphere and realize, okay, this is where I now put all of this into place and it's my faith. We want them to just have, honestly, starting in sixth grade, a trajectory into what their future is going to be. And what's really exciting and fulfilling is to see some of those original kids from 20 years ago now have gotten married and have their own kids and now their kids are coming into the program and starting the process themselves where we're living out this generational relevance, connecting their souls to Jesus as well. There were a lot of things I did not do great as a youth pastor of Faith Bridge. Shooting donuts at kids with a skeet thrower, not my best idea. But one of the things I'm proud of in the past of Faith Bridge's youth ministry is what Paul told Timothy. The goal of our instruction is love. That we said we want to teach people about Jesus and the end goal, not that they have more Bible head knowledge, but that they love God more as a result of our influence and love people more as a result of our teaching. That's what we're meant to do. The world can entertain them better, but that can give them the two things they can't get anywhere else, the godly love and the truth of God's word. That's the great legacy, I think, from the early days. And when I think about the future of Faith Bridge, what I hope is true of the youth ministry is that it would excel at delivering the truth in love.